how swiftly things have changed in the last 24 hours. You used to look out at the uh, horizon of the Atlantic Ocean, sparkling and clear. That's the USS George Washington off Long Island. It's been moved into New York's waters, uh, standing vigilance, if you will, off Long Beach, New York. Uh, that's a stunning sight to see. Also, air cover was flown over the World Trade Center yesterday, unfortunately, after the two attacks. Uh, and military forces around the world are in a very high state of alert, the highest, in fact, and I think that that still is in place. NBC's Dan Abrams now in uh, downtown New York, uh, as we say, way downtown, and he's going to bring us up to date on what is going on. Dan. Well, uh, hi there, Tom. The uh, rescue effort continues here. There are really three things they're doing back there uh, behind me. Uh, number one, most important, is the rescue effort, trying to find more people who are still alive in the rubble. Number two is a recovery effort, and that is uh, finding the bodies uh, and beginning the process of removing them. And number three is the beginning of the investigative process, and that is trying to find those black boxes, trying to find any uh, evidence. Uh, but for many uh, New Yorkers around here, all of that area, meaning the immediate area, the block or two right around the World Trade Center, is blocked off. But many people uh, walking in the blocks just beyond that, in the blocks certainly impacted uh, by this bombing. I took a walk around some of those blocks. Let's take a look. We're here in a block about a quarter mile from the World Trade Center. You can see that the buildings here are all intact. The pillars are still there. The windows uh, all in place. But literally, if you move down the block, you can see some cars uh, that have been moved here. And you can see the, the amount of soot uh, and dirt on that car from the scene. This really hasn't been moved uh, since it happened. But even more jarring, I think, uh, is this scene right here. Look at these two cars placed on top of one another. I think when you, when you think about the impact that uh, these planes must have had, it's hard to, to visualize um, it because everything melted. But here, at least you have some remnants. You have literally an engine uh, that is melded together with other parts of the car. Moving over, you've got another car they moved here. It looks like it's been through a war. Uh, you can see uh, the papers, all the, uh, the burned out papers from the building. You see the soot and the dirt. And it just shows you how devastating this blast was. Look across the street there. Uh, you've got a Con Ed. Uh, truck that you know some of the Con Ed people now looking at examining trying to figure out uh, which truck that actually was but that truck too uh, in terrible shape uh, so while many of the uh, items the steel uh, was literally melted and it's not just charred cars on this street you can see behind me this enormous piece of machinery that they are bringing in to help in the cleanup effort. There's a whole row of rescue vehicles behind it as well. Uh, almost a surreal uh, type of machinery being brought in here to try and help in the cleanup effort. So Tom, you can see uh, everywhere you walk uh, around this neighborhood, uh, there are either ambulances or cleanup uh, gear, uh, police, everywhere around here, uh, and uh, certainly just that alone uh, just makes you feel uh, the impact of everything that is continuing to happen around us. Tom? Thanks very much, Dan Abrams. As somebody who was there yesterday uh, in the midst of all that, as the buildings were collapsing around him, as 35-year-old Matt Long, a New York